Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Tacoma Cyclist. I am the Tacoma Cyclist and not with me as usual. This time is the sidekick, the boogeyman. Uh, today we're actually going to be talking about this race that you see in front of you here. This is the Tacoma Twilight Criterium. This is the uh, annual race that is the uh, Washington State Bicycle Association Masters State Championship, uh, as well as the race that uh, the team that we are currently on uh, sponsors, which is again the Tacoma Twilight. Uh, so as you can see, it's actually a pretty good sized field. There's, uh, I think there were probably somewhere around the number uh, 30, 30 or so people. And you can see right off the bat, I actually had a uh, minor issue clipping in. So I kind of felt stupid about that, but I wound up uh, making up the difference real quick here. This particular course, well, as you can tell, you know, this is a uh, typical Washington summer day. As, as much as people would like to think it rains all the time in Washington, it's actually quite beautiful here in the summer. Uh, so we're always blessed by good weather. Uh, for summertime crits, which is which is great. Uh, in this particular case, it was a nice fast crit, nice fast day, because there wasn't a whole lot of wind. Uh, it was, again, the state championship, so people came out with something to prove. And, uh, you know, we had a couple folks that were, were uh, working their best to get that championship title. So you can see, uh, like I said, it's a relatively fast course. We were uh, averaging, I think, 27, 28 by the end of the uh, crit overall. Now, there were a couple incidents in this crit, uh, one of which I was actually involved in, and I'll, sh I'll show you that uh, here shortly. But uh, for the moment here, I just want to go ahead and uh, kind of walk through the course itself. It's an eight-corner course um, consisting mostly of right-hand turns with just a couple left-hand turns thrown in there. And overall relatively flat with just two little tiny kickers of hills. This is one of them right here. And you can see the way that this uh, course works. It's wide sweeping corners so you have plenty of time and space to go fast and like I said just a little bit of a kicker uphill nothing big like three or four percent there uh, enough that it can wear on your legs and uh, actually this this helped me out I can do pretty well climbing on hills uh, and, and keeping the power up uphill so I made up most of my difference uh, to get towards the front of the pack here by uh, attacking on those little tiny hills when most people were trying to just conserve some energy there so again overall relatively fast and like I said, there were a couple incidents. In fact, there were a lot of incidents throughout the day, probably because of the speed uh, and the nature of these corners. You do see some uh, road furniture there. There's a roundabout towards uh, coming into the final turn. There's also uh, some cones there marking off some uh, uh, potentially bad storm drains. And then, of course, we've got the manhole covers as well. Now, if it were wet outside, that would have been a problem, but it weren't really wet outside. It, it wasn't wet outside, obviously, and uh, we didn't really have too much of a problem with that. Uh, one of the guys on my team right there in front there uh, on one of these laps actually nails one of those cones as he's going around. We're taking a tight line, uh, sends it into the group, but uh, everybody in the group was able to avoid it. Uh, as I mentioned, there are a couple incidents in this particular race. A friend of mine uh, on one of the competing teams here uh, was going around one of those corners. Actually, I think it was uh, corner four there, uh, right after where you saw the cones a few moments ago. Uh, got caught in a bad line and just laid his bike down. Wound up breaking a couple ribs, uh, had to get carted off to the hospital. And in fact, what you'll see later on, this is a, I think, a, I honestly don't recall if this is a 45 minute or a 55 minute crit uh, that we were doing here. But um, you'll see we actually had to neutralize this race uh, after several laps with only about four laps to go. Because of that wreck, uh, the guy that went down had to be carted off in an ambulance. So we had to close the course down temporarily while that happened. And it's really unfortunate, but I have heard from him as well as a few of his teammates that are friends of mine as well, that he's doing well and he's in good spirits. Uh, so the whole purpose here, uh, I'm not really that good of a crit rider. So my goal here was to move up in this pack and really change the way that my mind thinks when riding crits. I can maintain the speed of crits. In fact, when I get dropped, I typically don't get passed by the peloton again, or if I do get passed, I uh, only get passed once if I get dropped, because I can usually hold the same speeds. It's just that I don't have the nerve to stay up, stay up towards the front on these crit races, especially, you know, you can see people are cutting some of these corners pretty close, uh, and I just get a little unnerved. Not a big deal. Uh, it's just something that I'm personally working on, uh, and this is one of the reasons that I wanted to have to show this video. In addition, of course, to showing the, the nice horrific crash that I'm going to show you here in a little bit, I just want to show you the difference that my mind was, uh, that, that I kind of changed in my mind to uh, actually do well on, well, do well up until the point that I, that I wrecked. Uh, so uh, in the past, 
my goal with crits has been, hey, hang on, just do your best to stay with the pack, and you know you want to finish with the pack finish. And usually, what that means is you find yourself drifting back in the pack because if your only goal is to hold on, well, hanging on at the back is holding on. And when you find yourself at the back of a pack on a crit, well, you know what happens. You get dropped off. So this time around, as well as the past few crits this season, uh, I've kind of changed my mindset a little bit and said, uh, no, I'm not going to hang on. In fact, I'm going to stay relatively aggressive and stay up at the front. And that's actually really been helping me. There's been a few crits where I've been uh, finishing really solidly this season. Uh, and it's really, it, it has nothing to do with legs. It has nothing to do... Um, with heart and lungs, although, I mean, you've got to have those fundamentals, but that has nothing to do with why it is that I went from doing very badly in crits to doing pretty well in crits. It all comes down to your mindset, where you want to be, where you want to focus. So right now I'm looking up that line and going, this is where I want to be. Uh, sometimes one of the challenges I have in a race is, you know, you're, you're going at it for 45 minutes or an hour. It's easy to have that mindset at first, you know, you, you attack right off the bat and you're like, yeah, I want to stay towards the front. This is exactly what I want to do. And then, you know, you find yourself uh, 20 minutes into the race and your mind is drifted. You're no longer thinking, I've got to stay. I've got to focus on being at the front here. Instead, your focus is I've got to hang on. So if uh, well, this guy's getting a little close here, if you can, again, kind of reprogram your mind to say, nope, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. And I think... If I remember right, this is one of those areas where, again, we're slightly going uphill, so I use that as an opportunity to get relatively aggressive and move on up. Now, it's that corner right there. You can see on all of these uh, corners, we're at least two wide, sometimes three or four wide. These are very, very wide lanes, so we've got plenty of space to work. Uh, and, you know, hey, uh, here's an opportunity to, again, move up the outside. I saw an opportunity. I figured, hey, you know what? Let's go for it. Again, there's plenty of room here. Uh, not a whole lot of wind, so I didn't have to do a whole lot of sheltering, uh, and then worked my way up. Hey, look at that! We got somebody from Team Sky on the t on the uh, race. Oh no, you what? That's uh, that's just his pants. Uh, we we actually called this guy out because he was kind of riding like an idiot. Uh, wouldn't keep a straight line. Didn't didn't follow uh, the rest of the course. Yeah, here's what that's where uh, one of our team members clipped that cone and it sent it into the into the group. But again, everybody survived. It was it was fine. Um, Sometimes you take a line and you find yourself in a bad position. And actually, I'm going to cut portions of this and uh, move on to the wreck here and show you exactly what happened in the wreck. Before I do that, uh, I actually want to show you this, uh, this camera angle here, or, or tell you a little bit about the camera angle. Uh, the camera that I'm using on the bike, you can tell it's uh, kind of got a distorted view to it, and that's because it's got an ultra-wide lens. So... When it looks like uh, I'm directly behind somebody, like you can see move, me moving up on uh, Team Sky Guy here, uh, it looks like I'm actually you know, just right up on him. Reality is, is I was probably overlapping him a little bit there because that camera uh, moves me back in the frame. It makes it look like I'm further back than I am. So in this case, like uh, this guy here on my team on the right, I was actually, uh, my front wheel was probably pretty close to his pedal at that point. So uh, just bear that in mind when we go through. And also take a look at the lines here. We've got two or three or even sometimes four people going through these corners because they're two lanes wide, uh, sometimes in this case like three lanes wide coming through there. So there's plenty of room to work. So I'm going to cut here for just a second, and I'm going to show you the nasty little wreck. Okay, so again, we had been neutralized, and we're starting back up here. Uh, make note, the camera angle there, I was actually just about dead even with those two guys when it started. Now, one of the things that kind of frustrated me was one of the teams was a little bit aggressive with some newer riders. Check out this move right here. That's not a cool move. That's really not acceptable at all. The guy cut me straight off into that corner and gave me no place to go whatsoever, and there was plenty of room for him to negotiate around that corner. Uh, no other way to put it, that was a dick move. So, okay, whatever, I'll accept it. It pushed me to the very back of this part of the crit. You'll notice that the, the field is a lot smaller. Uh, basically, whoever hadn't stayed with the main group was either um, dropped, or you know they were the, the officials pulled them before we re-neutralized, or if they were only a few seconds behind, they held them for 10 to 15 seconds and uh, you know didn't let them start in the same time. Now, you see, I try to keep moving up on this guy. We had been doing uh, um, two to three wide in the corners, and you can even see there's still two to three wide here. This guy keeps shutting me out, refusing to let me pass. 
That's fine. It's a race. I understand you want to shut people out. But this is where it gets a little carried away. Coming into this next corner, notice the line compresses. It goes two to three wide. Uh, I announced myself to this person that I was passing on his outside. I even said, on your outside. And you'll see I get right up beside him. And he pushes the line way too far, knowing I'm coming on my left. And yeah, that tree that you just saw there is the tree that my face hit. So uh, we're going 27 miles an hour. Um, there could have been different ways to avoid that. But the reality is, is when you're going fast, stuff happens. You never know what's going to happen. And in this case, the guy uh, took the line extremely wide. The intent there was very obvious to me that he was trying to keep me from passing him. And uh, yeah, there's me on the ground. Uh, my face hit the tree at 27 miles an hour. Uh, my body hit the curb. Uh, lower half is on the street. Upper half is in the grass. Despite that, though, the wreck uh, could have been a lot worse. I actually uh, went to the medic tent after this, um, and you'll see some footage of, of the bike being moved around and me being moved around. Uh, but I went to the medical tent after this race. Uh, had great support from the medics there. Actually got uh, a couple stitches put in my leg there on site. They washed out the, uh, the road rash, which I had road rash on all of my extremities. I had it on my right arm, my left arm, uh, my back, my shoulders. Um, a little bit on my face. Actually, the face road rash was from the, uh, the glasses hitting me in the face. Uh, doctor tends to think that if the glasses weren't there, I probably wouldn't be looking out of my left eye anymore. So kudos to the glasses. Uh, road rash on the left knee uh, to the point where you could see the, the bare bone. And then uh, road rash on the right knee where there's gravel embedded in the leg. They had to pull it out and actually stitch it up. Uh, no head injury, like I said, uh, the helmet did its job, the glasses did their job. I had a, a CAT scan later that night and there was no head injury found. Also had x-rays later that night at the uh, emergency room. No injuries were found at the time, but I just got an MRI uh, yesterday and found out that my leg is actually broken. So there was a, a, a leg break after this. Um, it, it hurt. It hurt really, really bad. Uh, it didn't hurt the wreck itself. Uh, I didn't feel the pain. I didn't... Uh, I didn't feel pain immediately following the wreck, but uh, I did, of course, feel pain overall. Now, uh, you'll see what I'm stupid enough to do here. I had been having a conversation with the police officer that was there. That's the EMT that did a great job. Uh, one of the reasons you're not hearing any sound is because uh, apparently I dropped quite a few F-bombs. Nice, nice good shot at the uh, officers and other regions there. Uh, and at this point, I, you know, did like any good cyclist would do and said, how's my bike? And then uh, decided to hop back on and, and go. Um, actually got back in the race and yeah, I did cross the finish line, but I got pulled uh, towards the end. Uh, they marked me as finishing one lap down and I'm okay with that. I finished in 14th place, one lap down uh, with a broken leg. The uh, Oh, there's the boogeyman. And look at that. He does make a guest appearance in this video. <laughs> He's a little bit concerned about his dad, which is... Uh, Nice, I appreciated that, and he helped me out a lot that day. So I uh, got back on the brand new SRAM ETAP. Uh, hoods were on the bike, uh, the whole group set was on the bike. Thankfully, uh, they actually didn't even suffer so much as a scratch. It could come down to the fact that maybe I didn't tighten them tight enough, although they sure felt like they were tight enough and they were up to torque spec, but they didn't They didn't, uh, didn't so much as damage. It folded in, uh, but it works perfectly. There's nothing wrong, and it's uh, even still in alignment within the uh, derailers themselves. Now, the bad thing is uh, my bike got broken. So I did, uh, there's the ref calling me there. Um, in the process of doing this, I did snap my frame across the top tube and I snapped it in one of the worst places you can snap it, right where uh, uh, one of the hard bends is. So it's, it's difficult to repair that and expensive to repair it. But thankfully there's a good local bike shop here in town and they were very happy to help me out by getting me uh, a replacement frame at a very good cost. Uh, I also want to say that there were a lot of officials here that helped out a great deal. There were a lot of EMTs that helped out and a lot of the other cyclists that uh, helped out a great deal. On this day, the guy that won the state championship is a good friend of mine who uh, races for an opposing team. I couldn't be happier for him. He's a really nice guy. He's a very strong rider, did an amazing job. And uh, after he won, before he even went to podium, he, he came and checked on me to see how I was doing. So class act. Uh, all the way around and, and the amount of support that I got from everybody around is just is wonderful. So despite all the F-bombs that would be here if you uh, if I let the camera roll and the audio roll, uh, it was actually a good day overall. Now I'm out of commission for a few weeks, maybe six to eight weeks. Um, I'm about three weeks into that right now. So hopefully I'll be able to get back and ride here soon, especially on, well, another new frame. 
thankfully I'll be able to move my uh, ETAP over though and you know call it a new bike. So, well, uh, again, thanks for watching. This has been a, an interesting watch for me. It's it's difficult for me to watch this because it kind of brings back a bunch of bad memories from that day. But uh, in the end, I'm still going to get back on the bike. I'm still going to ride. I'm still going to race, and I'm going to learn some things from this. Which is, uh, you know, cover your butt. You never know when when stupid stuff is going to happen. Watch out for people. Uh, so again, thanks for watching. Uh, always, as always, be sure to subscribe, share this with your friends, and uh, watch out for uh, uh, watch out for your your butt when you're racing in crits. It does you do fall sometimes. Thanks.